Now, we have Oliver Oaks just announced as the new team principal for the dumpster fire that is Alpine. I mean, Alpine has had so much turnover. Look at this. Look, I made this little meme. There's Alan Pross. Remember, he was on the team. He's gone. Omar Stammer, he was on the team. He's gone. Laurent Rossi, he gone. Permit, gone. Pat Fry, gone. Fernando, gone. Oscar, I mean, it is unbeatable. Just, I don't really even understand. I got a, I have a phrase and it's called the poison chalice. And basically, the job for team principal for Renault, Alpine, Benetton, whatever you want to call it now, it's a poison chalice job. It will only last a certain amount of time, and you'll have your P60, your P45, you know, I don't know what you guys call it in the States, but basically, I would keep my exit card for, you know, the, the tax man right here in my top pocket every day with the expectation that I'm going to get fired, replaced, or run over. <laughs> Another one, thank you. Another one, thank you. I mean, go ahead, Scott. I mean, I think ultimately this is a team that's going to be sold. You're seeing that because they are moving from a constructor's team to a customer team. They announced it at SPA, Bruno Fahman did, the outgoing team principal, that they will no longer be a works team. They are not going to be making their power unit anymore. They're likely to be getting it from Mercedes that has caused threats uh, by the French workforce in France to go on strike in the power unit factory. That is correct. They may have labor unrest as a result. Um, and given that basically you're seeing Renault saying, we are not good enough to make a power unit. And frankly, they're not. Their power unit is much as 30 to 40 horsepower down from the others. Um, if Renault is basically throwing in the towel on being a works team, I think they're positioning this team to be sold. And if they're actually going to have only fans as their as their team, as their title sponsor, um, that to me is a concession that they just need some money, that Renault doesn't want to invest any money into it, that they're willing to have their Hollywood investors probably walk away or sue them because there's no way that these Hollywood celebrities and these sports stars are going to want to be associated with OnlyFans, and they probably are going to sue them as a result yeah. of this. They actually go forward. This is a team that is in absolute implosion mode, and to the point where they had to literally dig up Flavio Briatore from from bring <laughs> uh, back. I mean, this is a guy that had a lifetime ban until the French courts said you can't do that because he'll never be employed again from the cheating scandal and crash gate. This is how desperate this team is. And this is in such dire straits. It's, it's the biggest dumpster fire in F1. Of course, Carlos Sainz ran the other way. And who did they get? They got the guy who, who's 36 years old, the young, second youngest team principal in the history of F1, who founded high tech, the F2 team, the, the F2 and F3 team. And I really think you're looking at a situation where this team um, is not long for this world in its current format. Um, Andretti, if you're looking, maybe. It's <laughs> I hope Andretti and Cadillac come in and take over for Alpine. The thing is that you learn in sports, and the reason why the great teams are great is consistency. No matter what you have to say about Red Bull, Christian Horner's been there. It's consistency. They are really good at strategy. They rarely make mistakes in the pit yep. and consistent leadership. You have to have consistent people in engineering. And of course they take junior people to other teams so they can get, you know, more advantage and, and move up and make more money at that, that, that. That's what every sport, but all the great teams in every sport, consistent manager, consistent philosophy, consistent people and that's at every business and alpine is uh, they should probably teach this in mba classes this is what not to do this is what how not to run a business and i just i feel sorry for pierre gasly because i actually like pierre gasly and i'm wearing the alpine shirt in memory of pierre gasly memory in memory <laughs> Oh my God! Did he go up in the dumpster fire? 
Oh, oh my I god! Tap some music. <laughs> I wish I had the tap. Oh music. sure. Okay, so if I may, uh, you know, sometimes we we get the news and everybody jumps on the news and oh look, here here he is, Flavio Briatore, and he's back. And why the hell is he on the board at you know Renault at Alpine? What the hell's going on? Well, now the the dust is settling, and you know he is a billionaire in his own right. Um, he was behind many fashion brands being brought into many countries. And um, and he had a, a real passion for Formula One. He still does. Apparently, he's a real mover and shaker and, and has been for a long time. For those of you that don't know, uh, he was, and only until recently, he was Alonso's manager. Uh, and I, I'm talking like in the last couple of years is when he stopped being his manager. So I've got a funny feeling now that the dust is settling and, you know, exits from more team managers and new team managers being brought in. And as you say, Scott, and as you say, Sherm, that, you know, potentially this is, it's it's not about what this team is going to do. If they've already lost their manufacturing of their own engine and they become a, a non-manufacturing team, then maybe the whole point of uh, Briatori being there is so that they can bulk up this team, uh, you know, like do a fixer-upper on a house and then get it flipped. And that's probably why Briatori is there. And probably he still has remaining shares in there, which is why he went back. 